Emily is the basic unit of Filipino society. Filipinos are very well known for their high regard and value to their families. It can be said that the Filipino family follows a certain cycle. Parents painstakingly give effort in raising their children, and children give back by earning and working hard for a living. Unfortunately, not all families follow this cycle. There are families with history of abuse and neglect, therefore affecting the child and the relationship with their parents. Such is the case of Carlos Chu. The short documentary is a third of a series of longitudinal studies that aim to inspect the special cases in several family types. Carlos Chua is a son of Frederico Chua and Mary Lu Chua. We got to know him 12 years ago when a family relative of Carlos secretly approached our research institution and volunteered Carlos's family as subject to a discreet study regarding parenting and child development. The following clips were taken when Carlos was 5 years old. They are a compilation of interviews on Carlos' parents when they were invited to participate in a parenting study, unaware of the actual objective of the said study. Uh, anong pinakamahirap sa pagiging isang magulang? Hindi ko kalaya na ganito pala kahirap maging isang ama. Araw-araw, nagtatrabaho ko, kumakayod bilang isang government employee. Tapos yun, pag-uwi ko, pagod na pagod ako. Tapos hindi pa ako pinagsisilbihan ng aking asawa. Ay nako. Lagi nilang nakatutok yung attention niya sa anak namin si Carlos eh. Eh, kala niya mabuti siyang ina. Eh, hindi naman eh. Kung nakita mo kung paano niya paluin yung bata eh. O tapos, lagi pa niyang sinisigawan, pinapagalitan. Eh, kahit ako nga, minsan, nailita sa kanya eh. Paano pa kaya yung bata? Talagang napakahirap maging isang magulang. Lalo pa't hindi maganda relasyon namin mag-asawa. Tuwing umuwi si Federico galing sa kanyang trabaho, wala na akong inaabot kundi mga reklamo, sigaw, at masama pa yung mga pamubugbog at mga abuso. Minsan pa nga yung naisip kong hiwalay na siya eh. Ngunit, naisip ko, paano na si Carlos? These types of family dynamics have adverse effects on the child. We see that the abuse of Federico, his wife, led to Mary Lou's abuse to Carlos. Thus, making Carlos' attachment to his mother, that of a disorganized, disoriented nature. As infants, disorganized, disoriented babies do not know how to react to the absence or the presence of a caregiver and or a stranger. Carlos, paano may lalarawan ang iyong pagkabata? Lagi kong nakikita magkaaway ang mga magulang ko. Pinagbubuhatan ni Papa ng kamay si Mama. Minsan nga, sa akin na lamang dinadala ni Mama ang kanyang sama ng loob. Heto, oh, pasa. Nakuha ko yan nung mababagrades ko sa mat. Basta magkamali ako, sinasaktan nila ako. Kaya hindi na lamang ako umuulit. Sila yung basehan ko ng tama at mali. Ayaw ko ng pagpapalaki sa akin ng aking mga magulang. Pero, nasanay na rin ako. This sort of upbringing has led Carlos to establish what Holberg calls pre-conventional morality, even at the age of 11, where he is expected to have knowledge of social norms dictating what's right and wrong. It can be said that he has developed a sense of inferiority because of the authoritarian parenting style he was exposed to. Sa school, kahit gusto kong tumaas sa mga grades ko para kay mama at papa, hindi ako nagtataas ng kamay. Kaya sa quizzes na lamang ako bumabawi. Wala rin ako masyadong kaibigan. Tuwing recess, nagbabaon na lamang ako. Para hindi ko na kailangan lumabas at makisama sa ibang tao. The way Carlos was brought up really affected his personality. At the time when his parents should be there to help him understand the physical and emotional changes that were happening in his body, no one was with him. So, he resorted to having shallow friendships, which led him to do rebellious acts. When I first met Carlos, I knew that there was something different about him. Nung natuto siya makisama, I saw that he hung out with the wrong people. Kumbaga, naging biktima siya ng peer pressure. Palagi siyang nasa bar, nalinigarilyo, umiinom, at minsan pa nga, nakikipagbasa ang ulo. As Carlos tries to find his identity, he engages in a lot of adverse behaviors. Peer pressure has given him an avenue to find his identity amidst the confusion he feels due to his inferiority and his upbringing. 
not all teenagers go through it this way, but because of this history, the possibility of succumbing to such vices became more like. Lasing na lasing siya noon, nakita ko siya habang papalabas ng war. Hindi siya makausap ng matino. Hindi pa siya makalakad ng tuwid. That was probably his most defeated and saddest moment that I witnessed. Balak pa nga niya ang mag-drive pa uwi eh. But I stopped him. And I told him what I felt about the situation. I said he still had hope. At a difficult point of Carlos' life, wherein he experienced extreme road confusion. He found redemption through a close and concerned friend. From that point on, Carlos found his identity and changed his life. Simula nung baguhin ako ni Lester, tumaas yung self-confidence ko at nagkaroon ako ng kumpiyansa upang lalong galingan ang aking pag-aaral. Sa madaling sabi, I became a changed person. After a few years, we went back to Carlos and his parents. He is now a famous businessman, owner of a large ascendant in Canada. Simula at simula pa lang, nakita na namin potential ng anak namin eh. Siyempre, nasa pagpapalaki namin yun eh. Mana sa akin, siyempre yun. Hindi ko masasabi na ako ang ideal na ina. Dahil alam kong marami akong pagkukulang at pagkakamali kay Carlos. Lalo na nung bata pa siya. Mabuti na nga lamang at nakahanap siya na makapagbibigay ng atensyon na naibigay ka sana. Nakita ko na ngayon na talagang napaka-importante ng magandang pagpapalaki at ng mabuting pakikitungo ng mga magkakapamilya. This documentary ends a long to the study on Carlos, thereby elucidating the fact that upbringing and family dynamics will have great effects on the development of a child. However, the conclusion of the study will not necessarily apply to all families but it will mainly serve as a reference to make sure that your child uses his or her full potential. It's always best to pay attention to and engage your child's wants and needs and to create an inclusive environment for your child's physical and mental development.